Today I'm going to be showing you how to de-Google Lineage OS. This is a custom Android ROM that is compatible with over 100 different devices, and it's a good option for anyone who is looking to de-Google their smartphone. However, with Lineage OS, we still have some Google services that are running on it, even if you set it up without G apps or if you set it up with Micro G. Chances are you went through the trouble of installing a custom ROM just like this so that you would have everything that is Google related purged from your device. But with Lineage OS, there's a few more steps to do. And this should go without saying, but if you are dependent on Google services for whatever reason, like you need to use Gmail or Google Chrome on your device, then you should probably find alternatives to those before removing all of the Google services because none of those apps are going to work. So let's start with the DNS server. By default, Lineage OS is configured to use 8.8.8.8, which is Google's DNS server for name resolution. And this is actually really easy to change if you're running Lineage OS 16 or newer, because in the network and internet settings under advanced, there is a private DNS setting. So you can just go into there and then you can define whichever uh, private DNS provider host name that you want to use. Uh, you do have to make sure though that whichever one you use supports DNS over TLS. And once you have this set, you want to just go back to your internet settings and make sure that it actually accepts it. Uh, it's going to error out, it's going to tell you that you can't connect to internet or that you can't use name resolution if it doesn't work for whatever reason. And then it's recommended to do some testing just to verify that this new DNS server is indeed being used. So open up your browser and then you want to go to dnsleaktest.com and you just want to run it. You can do either the standard test or the extended test and it's going to tell you what the host name and the ISP that the DNS is using. And then you can also see uh, what country the server is in. So just verify that all of these are correct for whichever DNS server you decided to use. Next, we want to change our captive portals. This is a web page that is accessed by your browser whenever you connect to a new Wi-Fi network. For example, when you're at a hotel, this will usually take you to some sort of a login page so that you can then access the internet from that hotel's Wi-Fi. Now on Android 6 and higher, your phone is always going to try to access connectivitycheck.gstatic.com whenever you switch networks. So your phone is literally going to be pinging gstatic.com, a Google service, every time you connect to Wi-Fi. Now you could also host your own captive portal if you wanted to, but I'm just going to be using a captive portal from EOS, which is another Android ROM based off of Lineage OS, which focuses on privacy and de-Googling. Anyway, we are going to change this with an ADB shell from our computer when we are connected to our phone via USB. So of course, you're gonna to have to make sure that you have your developer mode enabled. Uh, you can enable this by just going to the build number and tapping on it about five or six times to enable the developer settings. And then you can search for developer settings or developer options in your phone settings. And then you want to make sure that you have USB debugging enabled. If you did everything correctly, you should be able to open up a terminal on your computer and run ADB devices and see under the list of attached devices your phone. Now we're going to enter into an ADB shell with the command ADB shell. And so you can see that I have now opened up a shell to my OnePlus 7 Pro. So the beginning of these two commands is going to be settings put global. And then we need to specify the captive portal, the HTTP URL and the HTTPS URL. So I'm going to use captive portal HTTP URL, HTTP 204.ecloud.global, and then settings put global captive portal 
HTTPS URL, HTTPS E dot foundation forward slash net underscore 204 forward slash. Now we are going to change the Android system web view implementation. This is a component that allows Android apps to display content from the web directly inside the application. On Lineage OS, Chromium is the default web view, which is pretty good because this is an open source project, but unfortunately it isn't totally de-googled. So I am going to replace it with the Bromite web view. Now the method that I'm going to use to do this requires root on the device, but it is possible to install this using TWRP instead, and that should work without root. So what you're gonna to want to do is download the Bromite uh, system web view. Most likely you're going to be using the one with the ARM architecture. So you can just go ahead uh, and download that. Now, as you'll see, if I try to just go ahead and install this APK using the package installer, it's going to tell us that the app is not installed. So it isn't possible to install the Bromite system web view this way. Uh, same thing if you were to try to go into FDroid and install it that way. Uh, it might not even let you download it, but it's definitely not going to let you install it. Uh, so what we need to do to get around this is to try and install it as a system app. And this is the reason why we need to have root on the device to do this. So again, make sure that your device is connected to the computer via USB and that you have USB debugging on. Uh, now there is an additional developer setting that we need to change. So you see I have the USB debugging enabled, but you also need to enable rooted debugging as well. So make sure you have those both on. Uh, usually when you check rooted debugging, it's going to re-prompt you to approve the computer it's connected to. Just go ahead and do that. And then on your computer, we're gonna run some ADB commands. So as always, just make sure that uh, the ADB device is actually showing up. And the command we're going to run is ADB root. And so it's going to restart the ADB service as root. And then we're going to run ADB remount to then remount this phone uh, as root so that we're actually able to modify system folders and things like that. And then we are going to run ADB shell. And I'm just gonna go ahead and clear my screen. Now what we're gonna do is change directory to the system app folder. And then we're going to create a directory with mkdir called bromite. And my says that it already exists because I've already uh, done this before, but I'm just going back through it to show you guys. And now we are going to copy that system view uh, bromite APK that we downloaded from our downloads folder into the bromite folder. And at the same time, we're going to rename it to bromite.apk so that it matches uh, the same name of the folder that's here except with that file extension. So uh, usually your downloads are gonna be in uh, data, media, zero, download, and here we go, the ARM system web view APK, and then we're gonna go into Bromite and call it bromite.apk. Okay, so now if we go into this Bromite folder, you can see this bromite.apk. And again, you wanna make sure that uh, this part matches this part. Um, doesn't really matter what the folder name is, it just has to match the APK. Um, and now we're going to set the proper file permissions on it. So we're going to chmod um, 644 bromite.apk. All right, and then we just have to reboot the phone now.
and it'll automatically exit you out of the shell uh, when the phone restarts. Okay, so now if I go into my developer options, we go into the web view implementation, you can see that now I'm using the Bromite system web view. Next, we want to avoid using Google servers for supple data when using GPS. This also requires editing an important file on your phone, so I would suggest also using the ADB shell to avoid any errors with that. So again, we're going to do ADB root, and then we're going to ADB remount, and ADB shell. And once you're in your ADB shell, change the directory to vendor Etsy and check to see if there is a file called gps.conf that is present in there. Uh, if there isn't, then you might have to go into the system Etsy folder. Uh, but as you can see, there isn't a, a regular gps.com folder in here. So that's why on my uh, particular phone, it's vendor Etsy. Now, before we edit the gps.com file, I would suggest just backing it up real quick. Uh, so you can actually see if I do another LS that I have this backup.gps.com. So this is the backup uh, that I made for mine. So now I'm going to open up gps.conf in Vim, or you can use whatever text editor you want. Uh, and what we're going to look for is the supple.google. Uh, so this is the supple host that's defined right here. You can see it's supple.google.com. Uh, this is the only place in the file that we have to edit. And in my particular case, the host name is actually pretty similar to this. Uh, I just have to change Google to Vodafone, V-O-D-A-F-O-N-E dot com. And then I can go ahead and save this. You don't necessarily have to use that supple host. You can use whichever one you want. Uh, you can do some research into the pros and cons of the different ones to choose. And while we're in this rooted ADB shell, we can also go and change our NTP server because by default, Android uses time servers that are ran by Google. So the command we're gonna do is settings, put global NTP server pool.ntp.org. And then you want to restart your phone to apply these changes. And finally, it's time to start removing Google Apps. Uh, so this is also going to require root access and it's going to require an app um, that is basically a root access uh, file remover or app remover. So the one that I'm using is just called dbloater. It's available in the Ftroid store. And all you really have to do here is scroll through. It's uh, automatically sorted alphabetically and try to find any Google services uh, that you want to remove. Uh, so, you know, you can look into the com area and look for anything that's like com.google. Uh, OK Google is another common one that uh, shows up as a pre-installed Google app. Uh, usually it's device specific and ROM specific. So you might have to uh, look that up to see what kind of Google bloatware is on your particular phone. Uh, on mine, for example, I had the default phone app, the default contacts was also a Google app, uh, Google services. Uh, but once I removed those, that was pretty much it as far as the Google applications go. So yeah, once you have those selected, uh, you just have to then restart the phone again and it's going to apply that removal. And then your LineageOS phone should be completely de-Googled. 
So I hope you found this guide helpful. If it was, be sure to like and comment to hack the algorithm so that other people will see it as well. Peace out.